so talking about experiments, uh, so Gabriel ran some experiments last year with some of the allocation. And so we thought I give just a brief one slide uh, update on what he's done. And uh, yeah, Gabriel, just go for it. Yeah, cool. So just share my screen here. <clears throat> Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, cool. Um, so, so yeah, as Laura said, that's going to be just a very quick update on, on the experiments that I have proposed the last year. And what I have proposed the last year were some uh, freshwater falls in the subpolar North Atlantic. Um, for the historical and uh, and the high emission scenarios, the SSP five eighty five, but in fact for the uh, what I have requested here in this group was just to perform uh, the high emission scenarios run because I have already performed the historical runs within um, within the computational core for my group, uh, but uh, as I finished those experiments, I thought that would be better to provide the model output for all of the runs that I have done within this project, because if one's decided to have a look at the high emissions runs, uh, they might want to also uh, have a look at the historical, say, say I have put all of those out model outputs uh, within the G data of this group. Uh, but I'll just show you here. So, uh, I had an issue at the beginning of this project, which was to restart the historical runs, and this issue has been reported uh, on the Hive, and there are some people that are trying to help us with trying to restart uh, the historical experiments uh, done by, I think, Chilo and, 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 and his group at the CSRO. Um, that was a problem because I was trying to restart those experiments using Paiu, and I couldn't do that. Um, yeah, in any case. So what I needed to do was I needed one, uh, I run from the beginning one more member of the historical experiment, just the common, the standard historical experiment, would I call it the HE48, 8I45, because uh, the CSIRO experiments, they ended, I think that M44, Chilo can be more precise about that. And so as I was running one more ensemble of one more member of this one, I choose the naming of 45. And I've done that for the historical and for the high emissions control or for the for the high emission scenario. Um, so those are two experiments that are also available for for this uh, for this group. Uh, and then I started I just okay. Uh, and then I started a four member ensemble using uh, for the historical and the SSP. Um, so the X here on the on the experiment made on the experiment name is going to denote the 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 number of the ensemble, and that's the same for the high emissions for the SSP five eighty five. And here I've got two scenarios for the high emissions: one that increases uh, that there is a decadal increase in freshwater forcing, and another one that's just a constant freshwater forcing. Uh, so. This figure basically is, is summarizing uh, those experiments. So uh, the objective or the goal of those experiments is where it uh, have a better match between uh, the historical runs and the, the observed AMOC weakening that has been shown by a diverse of, uh, uh, of observational studies. So, uh, Let's just focus here at the bottom of those three uh, last time series here. So everything that is in red is the observa are the observations. So observations here for salinity, uh, for temperature, and for the a mock at twenty six degrees north. So uh, and and at. At the background here, the shading are just the four to member ensemble of the standard historical and SSP 5 simulations. And we can see that they mostly do not capture the behavior of the AMOC, especially here from 1960 to 2000 and, uh, and, and for, the, for the beginning of the century. So 
uh, based on the physical process and also based on some, on some observations of uh, Greenland uh, melting and also uh, Greenland temperature, we came up with a freshwater forcing to try to match all of those uh, AMOC indices and AMOC strength. And we were, I mean, I think quite successful uh, with a freshwater forcing that is described here. Uh, so those 88I45, so those 8 i 45 and 46, 47, 48 Greenland melting, so GRM is going to stand for Greenland melting, are those uh, light blue experiments here that I'm showing for the AT45. And then we've got two scenarios for the high emission scenario, uh, which is one with a decadal increase, which is, the, which is the purple one, and another one with just a constant uh, freshwater forcing at the background, which is this dark blue one here. Uh, and comparing those with the mock trends, we could see that uh, the trend from 1957 until 19, 1992, uh, those the new experiments we use in this addition of freshwater forcing, they can have a they can better capture the mock weakening that has been suggested by uh, by those observations, and that's the same with the uh, early period of the century. Um, so, so yeah, basically that's my update and all of those simulations and um, are available, are, are available for this community in case anyone is interested and have a look of, uh, how those, how this AMOC weakening, uh, can be affecting, uh, all the process within the climate system or the process that, uh, that one might have interest in have a look at. Uh, okay, thanks a lot, Gabriel. Uh, do we have any questions? Um, yeah, so just to... So Wilma Unike also asked for storage. Uh, so she's using some of the storage uh, of the ESM project. So now we have, and I think uh, UNPAS experiment also, we're using some of the storage. So we have 30 terabyte out of 50 that are being used. Ah, sorry, questions, uh, Tilo. Um, thanks, Gabriel, that was a, that was a great update. Um, I, I just got a couple of questions um, and with respect to the new runs, you did the uh, new historical simulation that you set up and the, um, the emissions driven SSP 585. So the, um, the historical that you ran, is that a new ensemble member? So did it actually restart from a different time from the PI control run, or is it just um, rerunning an existing simulation so that you could then restart from, from this run? And uh, no, actually that that's a new member. So it's from a different point at the pre-industrial control for, okay. for all of the others that have been run before. Okay. So that, that's why I call it a 45. Yes. Okay. That makes sense now. Um, and then you're restarting your emissions driven SSP 585 from this historical simulation. From this, from this 45. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. We, we have also done emissions driven historical. It's not emission driven. It's just concentration driven, right? Okay, did, maybe I'm confused then by the... You by didn't the do this. emission driven, Gabriel, did you? Yeah, it's just the standard protocol. So with, yeah, I think it's... Concentration. Concept, concentration. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, oh, okay, sorry. Maybe I got confused because you labeled it as an ESM SSP 585, which kind of suggests it's emissions driven. It's just because uh, Thomas told me that uh, for the emissions driven, you were putting another ESM. So it's like ESM, ESM, uh, brain industrial or something like that. There is a double ESM. Um, okay. So, oh, so, 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 the it, SSP, so the SSP 585 that you did, it's concentration driven. It's concentration driven, yeah. yeah okay, okay. Oh, that, that, that's all good then. I was wondering why it says um, ESM, so I assumed it's an emissions driven but yeah no, i was also i was also confused about this name as well so anyway, <laughs> but it's just concentration driven just the standard uh, protocol for the high emission scenario yeah so so can i just ask 
and that might be relevant for the uh, for the group as well, what the issue was with not being able to restart from an existing run so that you had to rerun or run another ensemble member for the historical simulation? Is it because the previous run have been done not with uh, payu and is that is there the, an issue tr yeah the transition from a non payu run to a payu run i i believe so because uh, what i was trying to do yet was i was using the one start script in order to rebuild the directory in in an order that the payu the payu system understands yeah uh and it rebuilds this directory but with a few errors uh, and it can run the simulation like from one year, but after that it crashes because I think it's something related to the calendar that's not getting something right with the calendar. And then it might be confusing the full since I don't really know exactly okay. what is going on. Okay. So that's why I needed to rerun another member in order to be able to restart those. To restart and then it works fine. And then it works fine. Yeah. Okay. With PIE. If I do all of, all of the processes using PIE, so that's fine. I think yeah, it's... I migration between the two systems no it's great that you um somewhat solved it but i think that sounds more like a technical issue and hopefully we can solve that in the future we don't want to rerun things if it's not really necessary just to restart from point in time but i think Ian has done that as well in the past restarting and yeah she has her hand up anyway so i will i'll be quiet now thanks gabriel thank you um I was going to ask some science questions, but in terms of restart files, I did restart maybe about two years ago, uh, restart historical runs from, I was using PayU and I restarted them from older non payu runs. I do think perhaps there was a date issue um, and I can't recall what it was. I had Holger helping me out. It was, took a little bit of going to get going. Um, but if it continues to be a problem, we can look back at what I've done and figure it out. Um, my question science wise was, I don't know very much about, uh, how the model simulates, uh, variability in the AMOC and your results look super cool, by the way, it was really nice to hear about it. Um, I was just wondering, are ensemble members of two and four enough, or do you need, um, larger ensembles and related to your restart files, would it be uh, good to have historical members that were branched quite far apart so that the AMOC was in potentially different states when they were branched from the PI control? Or does it not matter? Because your results look great and maybe it doesn't matter. This is just, just curious. Uh, yeah, so your first question, um... I think that the number of ensemble members would be ideally would be uh, better to increase. And if it is the wish of this community, if we, uh, anymore is anyone else is interested in those experiments, so we can think about uh, extending the number of uh, ensemble members. Because ideally, I think that we would need at least 10 members because of the variability of the model, uh, as you said. Um, and and we can also try to restart from uh from different uh ensemble members that choose different trajectories of the AMOC to see if those results mm -hmm. still hold. So what I have done so far was also because of the computational time. So I run this historical, this new historical member, and I restart the experiments at the year of 1950. Uh, and in, in 1950, I apply a small perturbation in the ocean in order to generate an ensemble. And at 1960, I really start my freshwater forcing design for the historical simulation. So I do have uh, I think years where the model can just generate uh, another other variabilities within the system in order to generate this ensemble. Uh, but they are still quite short because it's mm. just 10 years. So ideally, we would need to use all of the four mm. members to the, capture the yeah. different scenarios of variability within the model. So what always sticks with me for the Southern Ocean, where I'm more familiar with, um, was when I was looking at existing CIMIT output um, and I was looking at um, Southern Ocean temperature. And in um, the GFDL models, they have this really strong deep convection in the sort of Amazon Ross Sea. Um, and it's like really cool. You can see this like 
temperature evolving in the historical run and then it dips down. And you can see like the SSP four, uh, four, five, five, four, medium and high emission scenarios. And so they're completely different scenarios. In the atmosphere, there's all this different stuff. And the oceans, they both just track down. And so they're wildly different in the rest of the globe, but that ocean is just following the same path. They've just broke, both branched from the same path. It just really highlighted to me that like, for some things, not for everything, but for some things in the deep ocean, the model is just on this path and it matters. Um, so I guess it's just something to think about. But that's for a different model in a different region. So Yeah, but we, we have been looking at these uh, those things and actually we are now investigating some of the teleconnections between the AMOC and the Southern Ocean. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we are now looking at and we can see that and whenever we apply some perturbation in the subpolar North Atlantic, uh, there is some teleconnection towards the Southern Ocean because we can kind of see this warming and it could be related to this AMOC weekend. So, yeah, we are currently investigating this issue as well. So, it, yeah, it, it would be great. To but cool. Thank you. Look at other models as well. Cool. Uh, thanks for that, Rachel. Um, so, on the, um, I guess, more science side, um, 585 is obviously the highest scenario. If you thought about doing a more moderate scenario in the hope that we're not on the 585 path. Yes, and we would like to do that. But the thing is that the other scenarios are not set up for PIU yet. So the only scenario that is set up for PIU is the high emission scenario. So that's why uh, for, for due to the simplicity... Yes. I should yeah. say that we're mostly looking at the coming decades. I think we were stopping at like 2060. So in fact, if you look at like the coming 20, 30 years, it doesn't yeah, much really matter. Yeah. Like five, for 2100 will really matter, but actually we've stopped again because of computation. We started to use a lot of computational resources. So I guess that's what, you know, it's a bit limited. But again, we stopped at, what, 2060 or 2050? Oh. No, no, actually, those simulations, they go until 2100. So oh. the, the, the four, the, all, all of them, they go until 2100, the one that I've showed. It. Oh, okay. Yeah. But our so, focus was more on the... Yeah, but our focus was more on the coming decades until the two-degree warm scenario, say... For the, until the two degree warming, all of the trajectories of the of the those emission scenarios are quite similar. But yeah, in, in any case, I think that would be very interesting to run those scenarios using to run uh, those experiments using other scenarios as well. But I guess also yeah. it was motivation was to see like try to get a range, and again, you know, due to computational resources, that's what we started with. Um, because obviously if you go in the middle, then, I mean, to go to the extreme right away gives you the, the range. And in fact, the range is not that large. Uh, it does lead to a stronger reduction of the A mark, but it's not, we, we do not get a shutdown, for example. Um, I should say also that 